All right, mates, how's it going? In today's video, I'm covering the Bilgewater Cartel and Fury of the Worgen from Chronicle Volume 3. So let's get... Cataclysm didn't just introduce Worgen as a playable race, it also introduced goblins as well. For many years, goblins had lived on the Isle of Kazan. They were pretty good at engineering and stuff, but they were probably best known at the time for being greedy little bastards. They rarely picked a side in the faction war because remaining neutral meant they could trade with both sides and make all of the monies. However, in a very black and white world, it turns out when you sit on the fence over everything, you don't always end up having any real friends to call upon in times of need. When the cataclysm happened, the volcano on Kazan called Mount Kajaro erupted. Molten rock rained down over the entire island, destroying most of the factories, warehouses and ships. The goblins had no choice but to cheese it, and the Bilgewater Cartel's leader, Trade Prince Jaster Gallywix, preyed on everybody's desperation, because that's the kind of bloke he is. His pleasure yacht was the only ship still standing, so he basically forced his people into slavery in exchange for escape from certain death. However, just as the goblins thought the worst of it was over, the ocean currents carried them slap bang in the middle of a naval battle between Horde and Alliance forces, and they got caught in the crossfire, and it was Alliance ships that fired on them, which is one of the key reasons why goblins decided to join the Horde. Also, they were just adapting to the times. For whatever reason, Gallywix saw the Horde as the most profitable choice. But if you want some evidence to prove that the Alliance aren't always the good guys, Firing on defenceless goblins is probably a doozy! So they went ahead and officially joined the Horde. And they settled in the region of Ashara, just north of Orgrimmar. Gallywix was forced to release his people from slavery, but he managed to keep his position as leader of the cartel. There weren't many others that had his connections or charisma. Plus, under his supervision, the cartel reshaped Ashara and built a new city, Bilgewater Harbour. Not only was this a new strategic Horde port, but it also provided the Horde with some extracurricular activities. Let's just say, whatever happens in Bilgewater Harbour, stays in Bilgewater Harbour, because it's full of prostitutes. Garrosh absolutely bloody hated the goblins' naked greed and lack of morals, but he saw the benefit of their engineering, so he went ahead and told them to build a whole bunch of shredders, and then deployed them into Ashenvale. This gave the Horde a steady supply of timber, and also expanded Garrosh's influence into Night Elven lands. The War Chief wasn't going to stop until the Horde's banner hung over every corner of the woodlands. And obviously, the Night Elves weren't massive fans of that. Things had been tough for them for quite a while. The Third War ended with them losing the enchantments over the World Tree that granted them immortality. And they were still trying to come to terms with disease and aging and all of that sort of crap. Also, the highborn Shendrila sorcerers from Diamol had settled in Darnassus. And now these bloody wolf beasts from the Eastern Kingdoms were coming over here and taking their jarbs as well. Both sets of newcomers drudged up painful memories from the past. Especially those highborn buggers. Even if it had been 10,000 years, they were responsible for bringing the Legion to Azeroth. And that's a real douchebaggy thing to do. Tyrande did her best to try and make everyone feel a bit more at ease. As far as she was concerned, they were going to need allies with the Horde on a warpath. This was not the time for isolationism. It's never the time for isolationism, unless you want to be weak and shit and lonely. Tyrande also believed that adding the Worgen to the Alliance would strengthen the entire faction. But that wasn't a decision she could just make on her own. So she called a little brain trust meeting and asked Alliance leaders to come to Darnassus and cast their vote. But things didn't go so great. King Varian Rin had no love for King Ken Greymane or the Gilneans. Those twats had abandoned the Alliance and closed off their nation to the rest of the world. Are we supposed to welcome them back with open arms just because their kingdom's fallen? Sod off. It was at this point that other members of the Alliance realised that Varian had a bit of an anger problem. Took them a while, didn't it? Although he was now whole again, after Anixia's spell was broken, he was just constantly furious. He pushed away friends, advisors, even his own son. And now his rage was threatening to destroy the Alliance itself. So Archdruid Marfurian Stormrage came up with a bit of a weird idea. Go on a lad's holiday. Get to know each other a bit. Drink some beers. Eat some schmores. You'll love it. The Archdruid was hoping they'd be forced to work together at some point on the trip and would become bezies. And it kind of worked. The more Varian learned of Gen, the more he viewed him as an honourable and courageous ruler. And even better than that, Gen realised that the ritual of balance that had tempered the Worgen's fury might help Varian with his problems. So the Gilnean king led the King of Stormwind through that same ritual. And for the first time in years, Varian felt at peace with himself. Meanwhile, Garrosh was still pretty hell-bent on invading Ashenvale. He's not changed his mind since like two minutes ago. The Horde encroached further into the woodlands and besieged a number of Night Elf strongholds. So Varian Rin, his new best mate Gen Greymane, and the Worgen joined the Night Elves in the defence of their homeland. The combined forces crashed against the Horde lines and halted their advance. 
and the Wargan proved themselves to be fierce warriors in battle, tearing through Horde soldiers and making them shit their pants. Although the Alliance reclaimed some of its holdings, Garrosh stubbornly clung to much of the land he'd conquered, so Ashenvale was now a pretty contested area. And after the battle, the Alliance held another vote on whether they should induct the Gilneans into their faction. And this time, Varian was like, Yeah! And the decision was unanimous. The leaders welcomed Gen and his people, and in turn, the Gilneans vowed to fight and or die for the Alliance. And we're leaving it there! In the next Volume 3 video, Alakir emerges in Old Doom and sets his sights on the Forge of Origination, and Queen Ashara sends her forces to Vashir to attack Neptulon, and then a whole bunch of other stuff as well. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks, and all that's left to say is thanks for watching, and see ya!